Hey everyone, welcome back to Tech World with Sahana. Today I am bringing you Kubernetes Failures and Fixes Set 3. So today's Failures and Fixes will be all about Chapter 4 and Chapter 5 of Kubernetes Zero to Interview Hero series. Chapter 4 covers the concept of replica set and deployment and Chapter 5 covers the concept of services and DNS. If you are not familiar with these concepts, make sure to check these two videos out from Kubernetes Zero to Interview Hero series. I'll make sure to put the link in the description and I'll also pin them to the comment. And once you check these two videos out, that will make this video so much more easier to understand. So without any further ado, let's get started. You scaled your deployment from two to six replicas, but only four pods are running even though there are enough nodes. How would you investigate the reason for the missing replicas? First, we check the deployment status and it shows only four pods are available and two replicas are missing or pending. Next, we look at the replica set and found that replica set exists but failed to create two pods with failed create error due to resource quota or scheduling limits. To dig deeper, we check the list of pods under the replica set and see that four are running while two remain in the pending state. We describe one of the pending pods and find failed scheduling error means pods can't schedule because nodes don't have enough free memory. We then verify node resources and see that nodes are ready but memory is nearly full, explaining why the scheduler can't place new pods. To resolve this, we reduce the memory request in the deployment specification or add more node capacity. After applying the updated deployment, the pending pods start successfully and all six replicas reach the running state, confirming the scaling issue is resolved. You've performed a rolling update, but users reported downtime during the rollout. How would you identify what went wrong and ensure zero downtime in future rolling updates? First, we will check deployment rollout status. We observe that the rollout wasn't smooth, so new pods took time to become ready, possibly causing the downtime. Next, we will review deployment strategy. We observe max unavailable is set to two, which allowed two pods to go down at once, leading to service unavailability. Next, we inspect pod readiness and probes. We notice that there's no delay before checking readiness and pods are marked as ready too soon before being actually ready to serve. So we fix and ensure zero downtime with the following updates. First is the max unavailable set to zero ensures no existing pods are taken down until the new ones are ready. Max surge is set to one which allows one extra pod above desired count during rollout for smooth transition. And readiness prop initial delay second is set to 10 gives the application time to start before being marked ready. Then we just redeploy and verify. After creating a cluster IP service, your pods are running, but the service IP is unreachable from inside the cluster. What would you check? First, we will check service details. We notice that service exists, but IP is unreachable. So we validate endpoints and we confirm that there is no endpoint. So service has nothing to forward the traffic to. Next, we check service selector and we found that selector does not match the pod level. So we fix the selector. So service could find pods and then verify connectivity so that service IP is reachable again and the issue is resolved. Your cluster IP service resolves in DNS, but the request fails with connection refused. What could have caused this? First, we check the service with kubectl get svc and we see the service is created and it's reachable by DNS. Then we check the endpoint and we confirm the endpoint exists. So the selector is working. Next, we look at the service port and target port and we notice the service forwards to port 80 while the container actually listens on port 8080. Because of that mismatch, the traffic hits an unbound port, which caused the connection refused error. So we fix the target port, changing it from 80 to 8080. And after applying the update, we verify again with kubectl get svc and confirm that now the service forwards to the correct application port and the request go through successfully. Your node port service works on one node, but fails on the others. How would you troubleshoot this? 
First, we check the service with kubectl get svc and we confirm the node put service is created correctly and exposes put 30080 on every node. So it should be reachable from all nodes IPs. Then we check the endpoint and we notice the pods backing the service are present and healthy, which means the selector is correct and the internal routing is functioning. Next, we test accessing the node port from each node and we find that node 2 and node 3 responded normally while node 1 returns connection refused, which tells us queue proxy forwarding isn't happening on that node. After that, we inspect the firewall rules on node 1 and we discover that port 30080 is explicitly blocked by a deny rule, preventing traffic from ever reaching queue proxy. Finally, we remove the deny rule and allow port 30080 and after retesting, the node port works on node 1 as well. Confirming the firewall was the root cause of this issue. Clients outside the cluster cannot access your node port, even though the required port is open. What would you investigate? So first, we will check the service and we find that it is correctly created as a node port and exposes the required port. This confirms Kubernetes has established the port for external access. Then we will check the endpoint and we see the backend pod IPs are present and healthy. This ensures the issue is not related to pod readiness or wrong selectors. Next, we confirm node port works inside cluster and we notice that internal access responds correctly. Since it works, the issue must be outside Kubernetes. So we test from outside network and we see that access fails when we try from the node's public IP. This proves packets are not reaching the node even though the service is ready. Finally, we check external or node firewall and we find the port is blocked at network or firewall level. Then we will raise issue or connect with the firewall team to allow the node port externally. Once done, the service becomes accessible, confirming it was a firewall restrictions, not a Kubernetes issue. Your service shows multiple endpoints, but traffic consistently reaches only pods on a particular node. What node level issue could cause this imbalance? First, we will check the service endpoint we found that the service lists multiple endpoints. So the Kubernetes knows about all pods. The imbalance is likely due to the node level traffic routing. Next, we will verify the pod node distribution. Pods are spread across nodes. So all nodes should receive the traffic. So we check the queue proxy status, which is not running on node two, causing the traffic to only reach pods on node one. Next, Inspect the queue proxy logs, which indicate that queue proxy cannot set IP table rules, which blocks traffic on node 2. So let's fix the queue proxy on the node 2 by deleting it. This allows the pod to restart, enabling proper routing. This solves the issue because queue proxy runs as a daemon set. So Kubernetes automatically recreates it on that node. Finally, verify service traffic balancing, which now reaches pods on multiple nodes, confirming queue proxy failure was the root cause. Your service exists and has correct endpoints, but traffic fails only when using service name. Let's understand how we can find the root cause for this. First, we will confirm the service and endpoint. We find that both exist. So the service should be able to route traffic to pods. Next, we will verify direct pod connectivity here. Pod IP response, so application and pod networking are fine. Problem is likely with the service name resolution or queue proxy rules. So we check the service name DNS resolution here. The DNS lookups for the service name fails. This indicates a cluster DNS problem rather than application or service endpoint. So we inspect the core DNS pods and logs, and we found that core DNS is failing with crash loop back of error, which is the root cause. So let's fix the core DNS and verify resolution by restarting core DNS. 
we restore DNS resolution, service name results, and now the service traffic succeeds. Your headless service returns no DNS records, even though pods are running. How will you troubleshoot this? First, we will verify the headless service configuration, and we find that cluster IP is set to none, which confirms it is a headless service. So, DNS should return pod IPs if endpoint exists. So, let's check the DNS resolution here. We find that no DNS record is returned, which indicates Kubernetes DNS has no endpoint to publish. So, let's confirm about the endpoints. Here we confirm that no endpoints are found even though pods are running. This is why DNS returns nothing. Now let's compare the service YAML and the pod YAML. We find that the service selector uses backend which does not match with pod level which is back dash end. So endpoints are not created. Now let's fix the issue by correcting the selector and then the endpoints will be created which immediately restores DNS records for the headless service. Your deployment shows the desired number of replicas, but some pods never become ready and stay in container creating for a long time. How would you troubleshoot the cause and fix it? First, let's check deployment and pod status where we find that deployment shows three replicas, but only one pod is ready. Others are stuck in container creating state. So it's likely a scheduling, image pull or volume mount issue. Now, let's describe the problematic pod. So we notice that the pod cannot start because a volume mount failed. So either the host path directory is missing or it's using the wrong details. And this is the root cause of the container creating error. Now, we need to inspect the pod YAML for the volume specific part. So here the pod specification expects data app to exist as a directory on the host node, but it does not exist. This prevents the pod from reaching the ready state. Let's fix the volume issue with either creating the directory on the node with correct permission or adjust the pod YAML to use the correct path. Finally, let's verify the pod. So after fixing the volume, pods moves from container creating to running and ready and the deployment now meets the desired replica count. So that is it for today's chapter. Hope this was helpful. Drop comments, any questions you have and see you in the next one.